Damn these Biloxi blues It happens every night And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer That could ever be a friend of mine I have not The summer heat never treats me kind It leaves trouble on my mind So I'm bidding farewell Putting in my notice And I'll see you at another time Sing This highway does not know my name and I don't care. No, I don't care. Yep. Heading my way for another place. And I got three good tires and a spare. Right to the hood. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to keep this. Low budget live, not so freaking live. And how are you, you bunch of low lifers from right here in the low budget live bar and grill, bar and bunker? Hope you're all doing well out there. If you are new to the program, that is a song called Biloxi Blues, written by me, Luke Duncan, D-U-N-K-I-N, like the donut. If you're looking for it, it's on iTunes and Spotify. You can listen to it on YouTube. You can listen to it on, uh, I believe, even on like Pandora. But uh, definitely Spotify and iTunes. Thank y'all for asking about that. There are still people that do not know Bluxy Blues. That is an old song of mine, and I appreciate y'all asking. Try to start every show and let you know right after, because I get those comments. So welcome, welcome to Low Budget Live, and and when we do it like this, it's low budget, not so live. It's more not live than live most of the time. The fine low lifers, which are the fine, fine listeners of this program, will tell you that it is mostly not live anymore, much to some of their, um, you know, ill will. (laughs) I I miss doing lives, but uh, it started as a live show. Kind of turned into a podcast. So here we are, LBL as we call it. And if you are enjoying this at all and you find yourself at the end of this experience enjoying it, you are now a low lifer. You are a low lifer. So welcome, all you old and new low lifers. I like when people are like low lifer for life. I get those hashtags. That, that cracks me up. Low lifer. So welcome. Welcome to Low Budget Live. A bass fishing talk show of sorts, of sorts. Uh, hope everybody's doing well out there. I know this uh, this week got crazy, man. They're always crazy, but this one was crazy. We we uh, my family and I we took a little hit. I took a little hit. It's uh, as many people did, but our, our losses were not as significant as others. But uh, Hurricane Sally. Hurricane Sally down there in Orange Beach, Gulf Coast, you know, Pensacola, Gulf Shores, Alabama, Orange Beach, Alabama, an area that is so, so near and dear to a lot of people's hearts in the United States, especially the southeast. It's kind of that redneck Riviera. It's where a lot of people go on vacation. And it was one of my mother's favorite places. Y'all, if you've kept up with the show, you've seen I actually did a podcast down there earlier this spring, back in April. But my parents actually have a place down there. And no secret, go down there saltwater fishing a lot, and uh, or as much as I can. I shouldn't say a lot, but uh, used to a lot more uh, before life got so crazy and so busy. But that area was smashed by Hurricane Sally, and terrible man, terrible storm surge, terrible wind damage, and uh, Dad's condo that he's got down there that he's fortunate to have. It 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 took a little took a little heat. Um, he also has, we have a saltwater boat down there that, you know, a small saltwater boat that, uh, we fish out of time to time and there's still no word on whether or not it's okay or not. We keep it in a, in a storage facility. One of those things that's, uh, like a, you know, off site, not on the water storage thing, keep it on the trailer. And there were 12 boats totaled in that thing. There's probably 200 boats in this thing, but the owner has not been able to clear his way to get to the back of this this deal. So, not sure. Not sure on that, and not sure. Dad actually heard that insurance may not cover it if it's totaled. So, whew, 
we'll see. But to thoughts and prayers with all those people down there. And if you're listening to this anywhere down there, man, that that entire area from there over to really South Texas, you, you guys are just getting the brunt of it year after year after year. But there has not been a, uh, a hurricane through there in a while. It's been some, you know, near misses. Hurricane Michael, you know, drifted just to the east of there, devastated Mexico Beach. Port St. Joe and area, another area is near and dear to my heart. I, lo- I just love the Gulf Coast in general. But spent a, just grew up, you know, going down there a lot. And uh, we actually, Captain Brian of the Shady Lady, which is a boat, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me and the boys and my dad and my brother and some other folks went out on, and we go out on it every year. And it's a buddy of ours down there. And we, we're actually fishing with him the last weekend in January. But the dock he had his boat tied up to, the current and the storm starts just ri- and he's at Zeke's Marina. Those of you from that are familiar with that area, you know Zeke's, and it's just destroyed. Zeke's is destroyed. The docks are destroyed, and it actually picked up. He's got a sixty-two foot offshore boat. It picked it up, kind of like I almost did that mic stand, but it picked it up and actually set it on dry ground. And we were we were seeing some aerial footage. Dad and I are texting back and forth. He's like, man, I don't see Brian's boat. Don't see Brian. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I bet he got it out of there. Where in the hell do you take a 62-foot boat? You know, there's no trailer. So, and he was telling Dad they didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was. So they all those charter guys left their boats. And there was one that ended up in the highway. But Dad and I were watching the Weather Channel and saw Brian's boat on the Weather Channel up on dry ground. They were Jim Cantore literally reporting in front of it. Never a good sign, but a uh, rough week for those folks down there. And Hurricane Ivan was 16 years ago to the day, to the day that Sally came on shore. And Ivan was a rough one. I think wind-wise and everything, Ivan was gonna, is probably going to go down as being a little worse, but the flooding and everything is what really, 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 really devastated the area down there. Of course, there's no power. And you really can't get in and out right now. So we're probably going to head down and assess everything here before long. But no bueno, no bueno. And you're sitting up here just on your couch watching it. And it's easy to not think about um, that when you don't live in a coastal area. But, man, those storms are so severe. So once again, thoughts and prayers to everybody affected by that and and affected by the last one. I know uh, some of you guys, uh, Barry Price, a low-lifer, Barry didn't even have power there for a couple weeks. He was messaging with me back and forth, didn't have internet, just now got back. Uh, he's getting caught up on Low Budget Live. He commented last week, but uh, he's down in, uh, I believe, Louisiana there, cl- close to Toledo Bend, but they got smoked. Smoked. He actually made a post uh, this week about that. So hang on. Hurricane season ain't over, and 2020 seems to be out to get us. So definitely hang on for dear life, folks. Really good week also, uh, on, uh, you know, kind of moving away from that. I want to say a huge thank you to Pat Renwick and the gang at Stray Cast. Awesome guys. We've been buddies for a long time. A lot of mutual respect for each other. Love what they do. It's definitely different than, than what I do, but a great show. And Pat, really, since day one when I started this craziness as an Instagram live deal, he was on the first one that we ever did at in Columbia, South Carolina three years ago at a bar. And uh, Pat's a good guy. He's a really good guy. And he had uh, myself and Fat Cat on, talking about MPFL and talking about a, a lot of things. But he's so creative, and he's such a bass head. He loves bass fishing. He loves the industry. He loves everything about it and loves catching bass more than anything. But uh, he's just a kid, you know, at heart. And he makes everything so fun, and he makes it uh, different week after week after week, and he's goofy and silly and super comedic, but at the same time, this is where he's sneaky. This is where he's sneaky. Pat is so unbelievably prepared, unbelievably prepared for basically anything. And a lot of it seems like, oh, he's just freestyling, riffing, whatever. That guy is dialed. He he does not get enough credit, I, I feel like, for that. And just his research on topics and and digging in. So had a blast on there with those guys. Go go make sure that you're watching Stray Cast week after week after week. It's Wednesday nights. They go live on Facebook. It's a great time. It's a great production. You never know what Pat's going to come up with in the gang, but uh, good people. 
good people that I'm proud to uh, proud to do their podcast anytime that they ask. And I've been fortunate enough to do it three or four times now and enjoy myself um, every single time. Every single time. So thanks, and thanks to everybody that watched that. It, they we we had so much fun, man. We ended up improving a song, and and I want to say too, Fat Cat, who is a friend of mine, and I, I feel like I know him. But man, we get in these situations like that, and uh, dude is so talented. He is so talented. And I can't. And just he and I were texting afterwards, and I cannot wait to put this NPFL thing together on camera. He and I. Just if we can keep the energy that that we have together, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody else. So super uh, thankful, super thankful to be on Straycast this week. And the same goes for Ike Live a couple weeks ago. Love those guys, and I uh, always love when they ask me to come on, you know. I mean, Mike Iconelli is one of my childhood fishing heroes, so to be on a show and be buddies with him is pretty dang awesome to me. And that, that's something – this week and kind of like I don't know the heaviness of like the hurricane and a lot going on and this podcast is going to be that it's going to be a little heavy I'm going to get I'm going to go deep on some things today no guests today but I got some stuff I want to get off my chest and I, I and I think that there are some things that need to be said that I feel like a lot of maybe fans don't know are going on. I, I think maybe even some industry people don't realize the gravity of some things going on, but we're going to get there. But there's, I don't know. I, 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 I had a great week with that, with stray cast and then the heaviness of the hurricane and everything going on. And then, um, and, and then I've got two really big things that came together this week that I'm going to announce soon. And they've been something that I've been working on for a while and they, they've, this week it happened and just grateful. Like I had this overwhelming sensation of grateful, like everything going in life right now is just, uh, it's crazy. And I talked about that on Stray Cast. Like it's, and Pat asked me that, would 19 year old fishing BFL me like where I'm at right now in life? And I, I think the, the answer would be unequivocally yes, you know? Um, so yeah, I just had this crazy moment. Like I, some some of the things I'm going to get to announce soon, you know, companies I'm going to be working with, and and big news for the for the podcast and all you low lifers that have supported us uh, and what we've had going on. Like, yeah, I've just I've just been grateful. You know, I've been grateful this week. Grateful, grateful for my family. Grateful, you know, just grateful. And I, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but I had this moment. I was coming up the highway. One day this week, and I and I had hung up the phone with one of these announcements I'm going to make soon, and had this really really cool conversation with somebody that I've known for a while. And we've been trying to work together, but I think it's going to come together for later this year, early next year, and going to get to make an announcement about that. But the the, the mutual respect I have for this person and they have for me, and just but just hearing the things and and what they think of this this deal. You know this, this world, this Luke Duncan world, and and it's easy to go down the rabbit holes of trolls and haters and whatever you want to call them. But but I'm just so grateful for the people that do enjoy this show. So I never want that to be taken for granted. For y'all to think I take it for granted, and uh, and I say that to say, Mister Johnny Riggs, Johnny Riggs, Riggs Manufacturing. Johnny is a low lifer. Johnny listens every week. I've never met Johnny. Uh, we converse back and forth in YouTube comments, Instagram, Facebook messages, emails. And Johnny owns this killer machine shop up in Ashland, Kentucky, Ashland City, I believe. No, Ashland, Kentucky, excuse me. Ashland City's in Tennessee. Ashland, Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky, I believe, Johnny. And Johnny reached out to me and said he wanted to make a sign for the LBL Bar and Grill. And he's actually behind the camera right now. And it's a metal sign that is a fish. Really cool. Here's a picture of it somewhere. I'm going to post a picture. Super cool deal. It, you know, lets me proof it. I'm like, dude, just build it and send it. This, this is so amazing to me. But it says low budget live bar and grill. And obviously you can see that. It's hanging on the wall right here now proudly. And just amazing, but the the detail, and you can see, you got the the eyeball of the fish as a butterfly, which obviously, mom, 
always in our hearts and minds. And awesome. So now it's sta- I'm staring at it. It's right over the camera. It's right there, Johnny. I'll, I'm going to send Johnny a picture of where it's at. But, but man, thank you. You guys just don't understand how much that kind of stuff means to me. Um, it's awesome. It's very awesome. So big thanks to Johnny and shout out to Riggs Manufacturing. If you guys ever need anything and you're up there in Eastern Kentucky, uh, I apologize. I don't know enough about Johnny's business and what he does, but I feel like he's just a BA. He just kills it in life up there. Um, just based off of this fish hanging on my wall, but I'm sure he's got it going on up there big time. So thanks to Johnny. And also thanks to the fine folks at Startron, Starbright. Had a, had a great talk this week with Danny from Startron about all the goings on low budget live. My buddy Danny, we got to catch up and hopefully going to get to go fishing with those guys here in about a month. Some of the coolest, coolest people on truly on planet Earth work at Star Trek and Starbright. Like they are completely obsessed with catching fish. Now, not um, they, they like to bass fish, they like to bass fish, but they are completely dialed into saltwater. They love the saltwater. Of course, out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but they will catch a peacock now, and they will catch a largemouth. They'll snatch one up by the face. But they are so, they love the outdoors. They love the outdoors. And can't thank them enough. Going on three years, StarTron, Starbright Cleaning Solutions, bringing you low-budget life. StarTron kicking ethanol in the teeth for a very, very long time. Ethanol will screw you. Outboard engine up your car. Your daggum weed eater, your chainsaw. Nobody likes ethanol except maybe people planting corn. And you know what? I don't blame them. I don't blame them for that. But still, that ethanol to gum up the works. So you want to kick it in the teeth with some StarTron because nothing ruins a good day on the water like an outboard engine that won't run. So get you some StarTron in your tank. And oh, this is one of the things I was grateful about. There is a t shirt coming that says, Shake your StarTron. A t shirt. They're making it. Shake your StarTron because of this, the first of every episode. That was one of the things I freaked out about this week. Shake your StarTron. So huge thanks to those guys. Huge thanks. That is, uh, (laughs) those are good people. It's fun to work with people that care about what you do and don't give you no bull crap. And just want you to be able to put on the best show you can put on. And it's it's a lot of fun, man. And I talked to Danny at StarTron about this new Thursday show that I want to do. And boy, he threw out some big names that he thinks he can help me get on here. And a couple of them will be a lot of fun. So hold on tight. Hold on tight. Hold on tight, you bunch of low lifers. Man, it feels good. I'm actually recording this on Sunday night late. This is the podcast for Monday, September 21st. It's late. It's quiet around here at the Traveling Circus headquarters. Did I say headquarters? Maybe. Look at this mullet. Maybe it is the headquarters. The headquarters, the LBL Bar and Grill. It's quiet. Kids are in bed. The dogs are all up. And uh, let's move on to some fishing. Let's move on to some fishing. So we had two... Two events this week, and I want to look up one of them real quick because I forgot. I forgot something. So we had two Toyota series this week, and I don't know why my phone sucks so bad. But uh, yeah, congrats to Jason Lablong at Lake Dardanelle. I think that's how you say your name, Jason. I apologize if you're listening. He has won two. Coast of Toyota Ever Start American Fishing Series. You know the drill. Just the Toyota Series now. It used to be the Coast. It used to be the FLW Series. It used to be the Ever Start. It used to be a lot of different things. The namesake has changed in that league several times. It was now the Toyota Series. And now they don't have as many boats. We do know that. But Jason, I think there were, that was the Plains Division. It was the opener in the Plains Division. And it had about 100 boats in it, it looked like. 100 boaters and co owners. Tough, 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 tough event. I think he had 40 pounds for three days. And then Scott Dobson, Scotty, up there, probably caught more St. Clair smallmouth than just about anybody ever has. They were on the Detroit River 
the other, the northern division of the Toyota series. I think they had about 80 boats. About 80 boats. And uh, Dobson won. They got quarantined. <laughs> Get it? COVID. They quarantined them to the Detroit River because of the wind and, and craziness. So all three days in the river. And Dobson won. And he, was, of course, won those before. I can't believe he hasn't won an FLW up there, really. He probably can't believe that either. But Scott's a beast up there on St. Clair, man. An absolute beast. Detroit River, whatever, Erie, St. Clair. He's He's got it going on up there. So he won that. I didn't see how much he won. I did. Uh, Mr. Liblong won like 70 Gs, baby. 70 Gs. Another Phoenix winner. He had $35,000 in the Phoenix bonus. And I mean, Phoenix is out here like this. <laughs> Gary Klaus like, uh, oh, and you get a 1000 and you get a 1000 Paying them boys because they're running them boats. Shout out. Shout out for that 35 Gs. But uh, but that does mean that in that Toyota, I mean, he must have won like 35 grand on the Toyota side. But I think those payouts and those things are based on like 200 um, plus boats. So I do think shaking up those divisions definitely monked that up as far as just having a, having a big crowd. We'll see next year. COVID could have screwed it up. But like the Northern Division had so many more boats in it over the years. And I still feel like it's kind of the only – triple a thing going on up north and i don't just don't know why people aren't showing up i'm confused by the toyotas now uh i saw some facebook comments this week there's some mlf wives that 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 steady cruise through there making sure that uh people ain't bad mouthing anything with flw and i i saw some comments uh about them toyotas and that they're not struggling and that people don't even know and it's because the opens are full because bass just has two divisions and maybe that's true i don't know but uh Man, people get people get tore up. They get tore up. I just they get on that Facebook and get to going. Just get to going. <laughs> I ain't got that kind of energy or time really. Uh, stuff gets sent to me, and I'm like, geez, geez. Um, passionate, passionate about their newfound love for their organization they're part of. Um, it's going to be interesting to see next year because they did drop a division. So it's going to be interesting to see if if maybe, you know, things pick up a little bit for the Toyota Series. We've got a uh, Lake Hartwell Bassmaster Open this week. The sec finally, geez, finally the second of the Eastern Opens. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we've been waiting, and we have. You know, they fished Toho, and then it's been like no mo. Brian knew. Y'all remember, we had him right here on the show way back when. He won it, made the classic, and now he's leading the points in the combined deal. Falcon Angler of the Year. And his quest for the elites and everything continues. He started hashtagging. Brian knew he started hashtagging Road to the Elites. And uh, I have a feeling he'll find that road fairly easy to travel, knowing him. He catches them up, and he's going to be a factor at the next level for years to come. But they are out there at Hartwell practicing, and they had this killer cold front come through like we did here. It's awesome. Feels like fall. All these ladies are out here pumpkin spicing, you know, putting mums out and whatnot, and it's still probably going to be 90 degrees in like another 10 days. But still, right now, like I woke up this morning, it's like 52 degrees. I'm like, come on with it. Get me outside. Bow season starts in Tennessee next week. I ain't complaining about these lows. I'm not. Your boy gets tired of sweating all the time. But Lake Hartwell will be interesting because will that trigger those fish into, you know, oh, my gosh, days are getting a little shorter. Nights are cooler. Are they going to eat? Hartwell is a notoriously tough lake at times. It's a great lake. It's one of my top five favorite lakes I've ever fished an event on. Fished there my rookie year on the FLW Tour. It's, but, but in March when they were on the bed. But it's just – and I fished there in February – before you know pre-fishing for that it's just an awesome place big spotted bass and really you know just a lot of bites a lot of fish but they're herring chasers blueback herring and whoever figures that out i feel like this one's going to be really stingy really stingy you know i I don't want to throw weights out there or anything like that but uh what i think it may take you know 13 14 a day or something maybe i may be wrong on that it may take more with this little cool snap but man the fall there is notorious for just kind of being stingy a little stench. So 
interesting to see. So somebody will make the classic out of that, and somebody will continue their elite series bids. All eyes on all these guys, you know, that came over from FLW, Scott Martins of the world, you know, Castle Dines, Bradley Hallman's, Brian Latimer, Upshaw, a lot of guys, Sheldon Collings. There's some of these. Well, I don't think Sheldon's fishing the Easterns, but uh, I think you got some. You also have some uh, BPT guys fishing that. I know Atkins is in, in both divisions. He's fishing those. Justin Atkins, he's fishing those Easterns. I know you got uh, Matty Lee over there poking around as well. So Jason Christie. I don't think Hackney's fishing those. He's just fishing the Centrals. But you got Jason Christie over there. So – Going to be uh, going to be interesting to see how that one shakes out. That is a, a lovely place in the world, though. If you've never been to Lake Hartwell, the people are great. Got great barbecue. The fishing is off the chain in like February, March, and April. It's a blast over there. It's an absolute blast. So, going to be interesting, and maybe we'll have a tournament winner on next week if we if we know who it is. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna crank a camera back up, guys. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the drill. So got this new camera and you got to restart it because whatever. Need a producer. Could be coming. Could be one of the announcements. Want to get me another drink. And by the way, before y'all blow me up in the comments, what are you drinking? This is Baywater. <laughs> Honest to God. It's Baywater. But this this little... Eagle Claw Otter Box keeps it so cold, but there ain't no liquor in this. So don't don't get don't even don't even come at me. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing right now. I've been hiking and, and crap. But there ain't no liquor in my cup. All right. Serious face. Serious face. Let's do this. Let's do this. Moving on. So and I got two pages of notes. When I when I got this much, got, yep, right there, yep, lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of just go in on something that's going on, some behind the scenes stuff. And this is tricky, okay, for a lot of reasons for me, but I feel. I don't know, obligated to speak on it because I speak my mind on a lot of things and a lot of people are like, oh man, you speak out about this, but not this. And I've mentioned this before. I have mentioned this, but not in this, not in this, you know, light. So corporate America, that's a, that's a big term. That's a that's a broad term, right? Corporate America. But corporate America and their ideals and 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 their money for a certain, you know, uh, to a certain extent are seeping into the bass fishing world, the fishing world, the marine world, the boating world, in my opinion. And it's not a good thing. It's just not. Uh, we live in a world now where profit matters more than people where profit matters more than people let me say that one more time for y'all on the back as they say profit matters more than people profit matters to keep the lights on in a business i understand that i'm a i run three businesses basically I'm involved in, in several businesses. Profit is something that is a necessary evil, so you can pay your employees, or you can keep the lights on, so you can, you know, build a house on a hill, whatever. So don't don't hit me with, oh, liberal point of view, or oh, you know, socialist, or oh, you don't want anybody making money. That ain't me at all, trust me. Stack the dollar bills up, son. I like making it. I like spending it. But profit matters more than people. Now, that being said, what I'm talking about with this corporate ideal is when I, when I think of, of a corporation, when I think of, you know, a Fortune 500 corporation, they don't know about Ricky 
in the mail room. I don't know. He's a, he is a number on a spreadsheet. He makes $23,000 a year. Oh, oh, Ricky. Oh, okay. They don't know about his family. They don't know anything about that. That's what I think when I think corporate huge companies. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds to thousands and thousands and thousands of employees. Ran by board of directors. Ran by, you know, the deal. Y'all know the deal. We've all, we all, some of you watching this are a part of this machine. And some of you probably perform very well in it. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. Obviously, if you watch this at all, you know I probably don't fit status quo. <laughs> I tend to speak my mind. And most of the time in a corporate environment, if you're not a yes man, you're getting axed, man. That's kind of how it works. That's kind of how it works. As far as what I see, there are exceptions to every rule. I work with some companies. I'm sponsored by some really big corporate companies that I work with that you would never know they are that way. At least in my personal life, you know, you would never know. Garmin, billions of dollars. Billion do- you, you think about, oh, Garmin, Panoptics. No, nah, dude. No. Nah. No, 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 no. That's a little bitty part of what they do. Little bitty part. They're Garmin International. Huge. Billions of dollars. You never know it. Dealing with them. But I deal with a very small group of individuals, and it's a family. It it, it certainly feels that way. But it is a very big corporate entity, publicly traded. It's a big time. It's big time. Doesn't feel like that. Doesn't feel like that. Most of the time, a lot of their decisions that they make are not are not like the decisions I'm fixing to start talking about. But I say all of that to say there is a a wave happening right now in the especially in the professional fishing world. You know, your general consumer might not think it affects them. You may be watching, hey, I'm not a pro. Why do I care? Well, ultimately it affects you too. For a lot of reasons, for a lot of reasons. But there's this wave happening right now of this, of this kind of corporate takeover mentality, profit over people, where you're seeing people really scale down. They're firing a lot of pro staff. They're sending them off to greener pastures, especially in the boating world. We're going we're gonna to get to a lot of things. We're going to get to a lot of things, but... But you're seeing that happen this offseason. And, and I've talked about it on here, and a lot of people have talked about it. With COVID, we knew a lot of people were going to use COVID as an excuse. And if you're getting fired right now, you were most likely on their chopping block already. They had an asterisk next to your name. Most likely had this planned out for a while, in my opinion. They, they didn't see a perceived value in you to a certain extent. So there are two sides to this, this topic. And this is, a, this is a dangerous topic because just as I've seen in some of the other avenues I've explored on this podcast, when people get their feelings hurt about a little guy in his garage's podcast and his opinions, it can hit the fan. And this one is definitely one that could. So huge shakeups going on right now. And, and I'll start here. So several years ago, a private equity firm owned Ranger and Triton Bass Boats. Let's back up further than that, though. Let's back up further than that. Ranger Boats sold several years ago. Forrest and his family, Forrest Wood, his lovely wife, Nina, awesome people. They sold it. And they got paid, man. It's what happens. And nobody can begrudge anybody for that. Nobody. Taking care of the families, 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 families down the road. Nobody. But Forrest always had this innate sense of taking care of his people, right? He did that. He did that. Even after the sale. So he sold, and then he sold to an Irwin Jacobs company, Genmar. Genmar actually filed bankruptcy while owning Ranger Boat. It was a crazy time. Crazy time. And this is before my time, even in the this whole fish and marine world. But but they did. So then, then they eventually it sold to a private equity group down the road out of California. And, and those are turning and burning, baby. They want to buy something. 
build it up, sell it, make a profit. That's all it's, that's all it's about. Most of the time, or I shouldn't say most of the time, a lot of the time they actually just let the company operate as is. So as all of that's going on, Mercury Outboards decides they want to own their parent company, Brunswick, makers of bowling balls and all kind of other stuff, decide they're going to start scooping up boat companies. And they've done that. They've, they've scooped up a ton. They bought Triton. Earl Bent sold Triton. And, and this has gone back into the whatever. Earl Bent sold you know Stratus to OMC, which was Evan Rude back in the day, and they screwed it up, and Earl started another boat company, which was Triton. And then you know Mercury came knocking with a crazy price. Earl got paid and took care of his people. Always took care of his people. So Mercury buys it. Everything screws up at Triton, okay? Then Platinum Equity from California that owns Ranger buys Triton. So that's the equivalent of Ford buying Chevy, Chevy buying Ford, wherever you stand on that whole truck, yeah, situation, right there. So that's that equivalent. We're like, what? Nobody would have ever thought they would have produced those boats in the same building ever, ever. They were the number one and number two, depending on the week. And that happened, right? It happened, so they're in the same building. And fast forward some years later, and, and Platinum Equity wants to get rid of it. And Johnny Morris comes a-calling. Friend of the outdoors, old John. And he, uh, he buys it. He buys Ranger Triton, legend. It's part of the deal. Buys legend down the road. And just basically shuts legend down. So that's a boat brand where we're down now. We're out there. Legend's gone. And now what we're seeing is a major restructuring of the pro staff at the White River Marine Group, which is 70% basically between Bass Tracker and Nitro and Ranger. You got to think that's like 70, you know, 65, 70% of the boats being manufactured, especially bass boats. And I feel like had we been in another industry, Automotive, a bigger industry, a bigger drop in the overall bucket of the country. That would have been a monopoly. Hands down. Hands down. Then he buys, then I say he, but Bass Pro Shops, then buys Cabela's, which is like, does what they do. Buys them. Shuts down a lot of stores. A lot of people lose their jobs, different things. But but now, and Cabela's had sold Rangers. They were actually Ranger dealers for a little while. But you, you so it's bizarre that it was allowed to happen, right? But, but get past that, get past that. We when when things happen like this, anytime there's a buyout, there's always the number one thing that goes on to the employees that are the bread and butter of the company that have been there. And it's you get fed a crock of crap for the most part, and it's that oh things aren't going to change, man. Everything's going it's going to be all good. Ain't nothing going to change, man. We we're, we're going to make sure this runs like it always does. That's never the case. It's never the case. You don't buy things to not change it. You don't buy things to not make money. You don't buy things to not put your stamp on it, right? People that have the kind of money that it takes to do these things also have very large egos. Rightfully so, but they do. And so you're going to want to put your mark on it, your stamp, whatever. So when that happened, a lot of the industry from the professional fishing side to the boating side to the whatever, like, whoa, party fail. This is not going to work in anybody's favor because what you had then is, hey, Guys, we're going to buy these parts for this amount because now we have this. And that's, you know, it's the Walmart philosophy. It's what happens. It's what happens. It's why you make these power plays for the most part. Make more money. Make more money. Profit over people. Profit over people. Make more money. So all of that being said, right now where we're at, there's a lot of people losing their deals because... 
Bass Pro, Ranger, Triton, Nitro, they're scaling down. So you got guys you're going to see next year in a lot of different boats, guys that have been with these brands for a very long time that are going to be, that are out there right now on the streets hustling to find boat deals. Hustling. And, you know, to be honest, the Phoenix, Skeeter, Camuses, Vexus, Falcons, Bass Cats, Express, Blazers of the world really, you know, they got their they got their deals going, right? They got their pro staffs and but they're going to they're going to reach out and they're going to pick who they want. Now what comes from this? I don't know. I don't know. I, could you see people just, you know, maybe pro fishermen have been too spoiled for far too long with quote boat deals. You know, my biggest thing with is I feel like on that side of things is especially ranger boats heavily heavily weighted uh their boat sales on pro staff whether that's a guy to get a dealer deal whether that's a guy getting a national deal and so i just in my little old opinion i don't think this is a very strong strategic move if you're trying to keep business because guys get pissed off guys leave and go to other companies like you cut their deal in half they're not just going to stay they're going oh i'm going to promote you absolutely i understand i've been here 20 years you cut me it's the same as cutting a guy's pay that works for you the same as cutting a guy's pay that's worked for you for 15 20 years after a buyout or something what do you think they're going to do not hang around you disrespect them they're going to move on it's human nature so you're going to see these guys and gals get absorbed into other companies. And, and what that does, though, it's, it's an overall shrinking of the entire industry. When that buyout happened years ago, now we're, you know, we went from this big to this big. Y'all like my graphics? And it's going to make it really hard for people to get the deals they deserve, the deals they had. And look, some of the people that are getting axed may or may not have deserved it. I don't know. They may not have been doing a good enough job. I don't know. Might not have pulled their weight. They may have coasted on winning some tournament 10 years ago. I don't know. I don't know. But there are very tough decisions being made right now by a lot of people, you know, do you stay or do you go? Do you, you you get cut? Do you want to represent that? And for most people, I think the answer is absolute hell no. You don't. I'm not taking a cut. I'm not taking a cut if I haven't done anything to deserve it, to deserve it at all. And I'm not taking a cut when the boating world is as good as it's ever been right now. People are as busy. They can't build enough boats to get on dealer shelves. We'll see, you know, six months from now. I don't know. But right now, it's super busy. So COVID's not a good excuse. It's just not. It's profit over people. That's what it ends up coming down to. There are rumors flying out there that Bass Pro is really cutting back. You know, if you're affiliated with Tackle Warehouse, Sportsman's, whatever, uh, what's the other Larry Potterfield thank you for your business any other tackle thing whatsoever or boat brand vice versa you're out you're out man you can either you want a boat deal here's your Bass Pro hat you better wear it and the problem with that is if you're a guy that can assume that you know deal that's awesome maybe it's better for you and your family but if you've been lull to jimbobstackle.com for 10 years and now the big dogs coming and, and saying hey man we know you've been with ranger for 20 years but you better you better wear this bass pro hat and it and it makes you, it automatically makes you have a conflict with an existing sponsor and that's where i lose it that's not okay that's the overall shrinking of the industry for profit over people it's a big deal man it's a big deal. You know, when is enough money enough? That's that's where I get. Like, for me and my family, I mean, being happy, you know, 
should mean something. I know people that have more money than they could ever spend, and they're miserable. They're miserable. So and it's almost like, and it is that you're dealing with egos, and you're dealing with a lot of things, but it's almost like it does just become a, a, become a game, you know. Um, and that's where you get these splits, right? Earl Bentz took his ball and left White River, started Camus Boats. Keith Daffron, Randy Hopper, and a lot of Ranger employees that are no longer employed by Ranger left. My camera just did something crazy. No clue what just happened. But a lot of guys, they left Ranger, started Vexus Boats. Now you're seeing that grow. And it's, you know, I don't see where this is beneficial. You know, overall, I I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Um, I I feel like there's going to be a lot of people left stranded. So, like I said, they're certainly not the first. They won't be the last. They were just kind of the, uh, you know, something that, that, that got me, got me going, that got me going on this deal. Um, moving on within this same topic, you know, you've seen, obviously, guys lost their Evanier deals this year. So now you're down to Mercury Yamaha. These motor companies can pick and choose who they want, who they don't want which is good for them and their budgets, I guess, but you can't absorb everybody and everybody's going to need a quote deal. And if you have to buy stuff when you're trying to do this for a living and you've had a certain, it's just like taking a pay cut at at work. And I know all of you out there have experienced that. So I'm not trying to be a bleeding heart for all pro fishermen because so sad, too bad you get to fish for a living, but it is making it more difficult. We're talking about, you know, every Organization talks about growing the sport, growing the sport, growing the sport. Well, in the sponsor world, this is not growing the sport. All of this shrinking is not growing the sport. It's not. It's not, man. Um, not at all. You know, bass boat sales have been the same for ever. The last several years, there's about the same number built every single year. You're seeing a shift to aluminum a lot more, and that's I believe that's because of you know, how much the dang things cost. We've talked about that. Uh, but but there's definitely a shift going on. Definitely a shift going on. Um, but the same number of bass boats are pretty much built. Even though I, you know, you name off Phoenix, Skeeter, Bass Cap, Vexus, Camus, Falcon, Blazer, Express, you know, Crestliner. We see some guys running those. You see all this, but there's not that many more boats built between all those brands is just splitting up that pie a little bit now some of their pies are getting a little bigger by the day by the day and i I think a company like phoenix is in a prime spot right now with that 35 grand they're throwing out the toyotas and all that and 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 bfl money and different things crazy money crazy money so will ranger lose a lot of business from everything going on we'll see we'll see Certainly an interesting time. Um, and this is not just relegated just to the boating part of this. I, I, I started with that. So like I said, it, it's affected me personally in many ways. But mom and pop goes corporate is the overall theme anymore. And I don't blame mom and pop for trying to take care of their family and Enjoying the fruits of their hard labor for years and years and years and years. years. I could never begrudge anybody for making a living. Ever. Not one time. And for taking a big lick. Some slicked up dude comes in, suit and tie, says, I want to buy Luke Duncan's Traveling Circus for $87 million. (whistles) You bought it, son. I mean, what are you going to do? Right? But I think the difference in some people is the people that can... Take care of the people that got you the profit. The people that can take care of those people that have been with you 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years after the big lick. Or the people that can maintain that family feel after the big lick. It goes on. It happens. But but not always. I mean, I, I'm dealing with it right now 
in my own life at TH Marine outside all this. We were we were purchased by private equity last year and you get you get them speeches that everything's going to stay the same. It don't. That's just the truth. It don't. And if you tell yourself it's not going to change a little bit, you're lying. Or if you tell your employees it's not going to change, you are lying. Those are lies. No matter how you mix it up, those are lies. Profit over people. You got to take care of your people. You got to take care of your people, man. Always take care of your people. But everything changes when that happens. And these private equity firms are turn and burn. Like I said, that's we've seen it so many times. And now you have those involved. I think we're on maybe the second one for Strike King and, and Strike King and then Lose became one thing. Maybe it was Lose that got bought first and then they bought Strike King. I can't keep it all straight. You know, we've seen this in a company I'm very involved with, Pure Fishing, on the Abu Garcia side of things. The thing, they, they shrink the industry every day, though. The more lines they add and the more, you know, they, they try to wrap their arms around everything. I understand why they do it. It puts a lot of guys in tough spots. It puts a lot of people, guys and gals and, and uh, pro staff people in tough positions. You know, when you have to choose these all or nothing kind of deals because all of a sudden, one second. Got to change the camera again. Got it. Got him. But these all or nothing deals, when you have to pick, when all of a sudden a company goes from being crankbaits, whatever, for example, to sunglasses, fishing line hooks, crankbaits, soft plastics, hoodies, hats, flip flops, underwear, and and oh, if you want a paycheck, we well, got a sign right here. That makes it tough, man. It's good for some people because they like that. Well, I'll just get everything one stop shop. I represent this brand, but when you and I've I've got several close friends of mine that have signed with some of these companies that have lost those deals now, and it's everything. You know, I've always been kind of old school in that kind of piecemealing it together to make a living. The more sponsors you have, the better you can do for yourself if you work hard. But now. The industry's doing this as a whole. Now, there are still a lot of companies that are doing it the small mom and pop way, and there always will be. There always will be. But you're definitely seeing corporate America seep in more and more and more. You know, um, and these household brands that we've all grown to love and support are just not what they were. From a, a, a business model standpoint, the products are the same. A lot of the people are still there, but profit over people for the most part, profit over people. And if you don't walk the line and you don't go status quo with everything going on, they'll just find somebody that'll say, yes, sir. And I understand that's probably 90% of you watching this, but... My thing is, I would rather be happy in life, always, than to not be who I am. I would rather speak my mind and kiss somebody's ass. Not, and I can kiss ass with the best of them. I can't. But I want somebody to sponsor Luke because he's Luke. I want... You guys, low lifers, listen to this show. I want you to enjoy it because it's Luke, not because I'm a character I play on here. Because I'm Luke, and that's what I try to do week after week is give you a little insight into my life, into my mindset. And this week, this was on my heart. This is on my heart, and um, there are a lot of good people getting rolled in this world right now and getting really crappy excuses as to why they're getting rolled while a lot of people get a lot wealthier because you're just a name on a spreadsheet at the end of the day with a number next to it. If they can cut that number, then they can make their numbers. Shouldn't be that way. 
Has to be that way in a certain extent. I understand that. I'm not a hippie. <laughs> I get, I work hard, man. I make a great living for my family. I work hard. And, uh, and I hustle. I hustle to get it. So I, I myself understand profit, like I said. But at what cost? At what cost? We're going to see. We're going to see. Thank y'all so much for tuning in each and every week. I hope y'all enjoyed this show. I, I hope you, uh, I, this, this episode in particular, I hope you do. And uh, please comment below, man, if I'm right, wrong, what you think about it. Uh, I know this affects all of you because ultimately it, it, it affects the prices you pay for things, it, whether it goes to boats, to tackle, whatever, it, it does. If they can do it, they will do it. Will the Garage Podcast stop it? Probably not. I'm not crazy to think that this is going to be some big aha moment for some guy sitting behind a desk. Some board meeting is going to play this and be like, this guy with a Kool-Aid statue behind him has got it figured out because I don't. I'm just saying a good friend of mine that is a professional angler on the Bassmaster Elite Series said profit over people to me in a text message earlier this year regarding this subject and I typed it into my phone because as simple of a statement that is it was one of the most philosophical things I've ever heard at the time and what we were talking about and think about that if you're running a business man just think about that take care of your people take care of people we get one ride around this thing take care of people take care of people and thank y'all for taking care of me. Watching this every week, giving me the opportunity to go out and get sponsors and absolutely provide a life for my family. You know, we don't have beach houses and private jets. You know, my dad does have a condo. I talked about that earlier. That ain't mine. Didn't grow up rich either. Before some of y'all comment that, rich boy. Didn't, not at all. Not at all. Very blue collar family. Work hard for everything you got. Work hard and it'll come to you. Grew up that way and take care of people, take care of people. It's always been my mother took care of people. My grandparents took care of people. If somebody didn't have enough to eat, my, my grandparents ran a produce market in our little town, Duncan's Market, and, and my grandmother was notorious if somebody came in and didn't have enough money for food, she gave them food. Take care of people. Take care of people, man. You work hard and you take care of people. Some people can't take care of themselves. They just can't. So you got to take care of them. Got to take care of people. So it's where we're at. That's where we're at. I, I don't see, and the same goes their own in tournament organizations. From Bass to FLW to MLF, profit, 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 profit. Figure it out. Oh, we'll get rid of Donnie down the hall because he costs us 30 grand and we don't need him. We can make two, get, you know, uh, some college kid intern to do that for 13 grand. You know, that kind of crap is invading all of it. CFOs and, you know, they're the worst, right? These guys that just look at numbers and everything's a number. Number, 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 number. Oh, numbers, numbers. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Oh, excuse me. Are you a number? Um, they have the worst job in the world just to make sure the profits and losses look right. And they will literally X out and drop the one and cross and put something up here just to make it look good. To get the numbers right. It's garbage. It's garbage. All right. We're going to end this shindig. Thank y'all, man. Like I said, comment below. Comment below if you think I'm wrong or if you agree or if you hate my guts. I don't, I don't care. Just comment. <laughs> I like going back and forth with y'all, obviously. Really appreciate y'all very much every week. I know I've said that. I've gone to end it, and then I have another brain fart over and over and over. But thank y'all so much, man, for listening week after week after week. I hope y'all are still enjoying this show as much as you um, always did. I, I try to be myself, and that's one thing I promise you. That's what you're always going to get dealing with me. Make sure you hug your daggum mama. I know I miss mine every day. We're coming up on uh, close to a year since since uh, 
Miss Teresa left our lives, but uh, I've been thinking about her a lot this week as well with all this going on with the hurricane and all that. Orange Beach, Alabama is one of her favorite places. So be sure to hug your mama. Be sure to hug your damn daddy too. Uh, I'm going to take you out, like always, with a little bit of Biloxi Blues, that same old Luke Duncan song. And we hope to have some new music very soon. And I say we, me and my buddy Shannon Wheeler, dude, let's fish. We're going to get together. Thank y'all. I hope y'all have a good week. See y'all next time. The Civil War ghost, well, I'm gonna leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter, east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens at rest. This highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no. and a spare Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there